Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is the new situation battle on PSN starting this uh, past weekend, Spectres and Fallen Beasts. It is a uh, Gundam side story uh, themed uh, situation battle. On this side we've got a Zaku High Mobility Ground, uh, thanks to somebody in the uh, comments on my other video for uh, pointing that out to me. Uh, two Zaku 2s, of which I am one. Uh, the Freed uh, Doug Schneid Custom, uh, the Zaku Heavy Weapons Type, and uh, yeah, that's the Xeon side. On the Federation side, we've got a Gundam Pixie, uh, Gundam Ground Type, Gun Cannon Heavy Type D, or excuse me, a Gym Ground Type. Uh, possibly two of those, and a Slave Wraith. Uh, Maelstrom pointed out to me that uh, the... Ah, words, Rob, come on. Why are words difficult? Um, Nelson pointed out to me that the Pixie is actually uh, not properly equipped because the Pixie in uh, Missing Link never used the uh, uh, double machine guns. It only used the uh, bullpup rifle that is fairly standard to Federation ground forces. Actually, I guess Federation forces in general. The, the uh, 100mm is more common with the ground type stuff. But... Yeah, so far so good. Our heavy weapon Zaku is hanging back and uh, uh, sniping from a distance, which is a good idea. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think it's about to try and throw some uh, leg missiles. Nope. Uh, caught somebody with the uh, uh, prototype Magella top, which that's good. But yeah, I believe the only, you know, they've, as usual, they've uh, changed the specs a little bit on the... Uh, mobile suits for this. Unlike other uh, other situation battles where they did give the uh, standard Zaku uh, uh, dodge roll, the only adjustment to it uh, for this round, I believe, is uh, giving it uh, two-hit melee. So that is... Or did they make that permanent recently? I cannot remember. But yeah, I know, I know there was one small adjustment to it, and that was... Uh, I think that was it. Uh, all I can say for sure is it definitely does not have dodge roll as, as far as I've been able to tell because I, I do have a bad habit of trying to use that even when I don't have it. Let's see, the Doug Schneid Freet seems to be way back in there and uh, I don't think any of us are going to be able to get too close to uh, help it out. So yeah, probably going to uh, gonna drop in a second. Okay, mild hit to the legs, nothing major. Um... Missed the pixie with the grenade. There, there's nothing quite like hitting things with a long distance grenade toss in this, especially when you got a kill with it. It's just one of those, you know, there are just certain things about GBO2 that I find very satisfying. Yeah, there's the two hit melee. Um, one of them is definitely, you know, grenade tosses from, you know, way out of state compared to where your uh, target is. And, uh, you know, pin, uh, pinpoint shots with a beam rifle being one of the others. Just when you're, you know, fighting, uh, when you're fighting with a beam rifle and able to, uh, you know, fire into, or, you know, into or past a melee in front of you. And, uh, you know, get a target uh, that realistically you should not have a good, uh, good uh, shot on. That's always really satisfying. Yeah, that's, uh, the Slave Wraith is right around, yep, there it is. It's about to say, it's right around here because of the, uh, fake beacon. Unfortunately, I kind of went right into the, uh, Doug Schneid's range when it was trying to, uh, take on the Slave Wraith. But, let's see, got the shield, and I'm not sure, ah, somebody accidentally hit me in the back, it looks like, and I am just, yeah, I'm just trying to go after that Slave Wraith, but now that the Heavy Type D is here, that might be harder. Or not, because it might just walk in front of me and be killable. I was out of boost, so the uh, gym ground is uh, was not, uh, was able to get a shot in on me. But luckily, uh, our team is grouped up pretty well at the moment. I'm just yeah you know, trying to stay out of its rocket launcher range. Unfortunately, that put me in the range of the other ground type. But yeah, so I took a little damage. I'm holding up relatively well, and yeah, this Zaku just has I I. I know they've uh, adjust, you know, they, like I said, they always adjust the stats for situation battles, and 
Uh, depending on, you know, the kind of information they gather after this weekend, they may well be uh, tweaked slightly again for next week, too. But, uh, yeah, the I feel like the downswing damage on this uh, Zaku has been pumped up pretty high, because I'm, you know, this I'm not sure what level Zaku this is, in all honesty. But, uh, uh, I guess it's a 400, because that, or no, 350, because the pilot cost would be in there, too, I think. And they just got about 400 points from killing me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't feel like at that, at those costs, say Zaku should be, uh, doing quite that much downswing damage. So technically, technically 350 would be a level of Zaku that I don't think exists, so it can, you know, do whatever it wants. Yeah, that would be the level, that would be a level 6, wouldn't it? Level 6 or level 7, so that's pretty, uh... Pretty hardy. Okay, 400 for the Pixie. Jim Ground knocked me down. Doesn't mean a lot. I can't really say what the Zakus are worth because I, I don't know. I have not gotten a single Federation round on this situation battle yet. I played the regular Zaku two or three times, and I played the uh, heavy Zaku once. I wish I'd gotten a better round with that because I've always loved using that thing, but uh, you know, to be honest, as, as much as I'd like to see things other than... Uh, uh, Arctic base in circulation, it is kind of nice on some level to uh, see Mountain again, just because it's been long enough that, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not totally sick of it. Also, just this is balanced well enough and going well enough for us that it was not frustrating. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the team that starts out behind the arch can just get locked back there and it can be really, really frustrating, but, uh, did not happen, you know, decent balance, decent teams, and it all worked out just fine. And yeah, the that's right, the, uh, I forget the name of the uh, skill that protects, uh, oh, explosive reactive armor, yeah, the uh, uh, skill that keeps the uh, gun cannon heavy type D from getting stunned by splash damage. But, yeah, that was, uh, unless I hit it directly with the bazooka, it is not. And that was where I tried to uh, dodge roll and, you know, was reminded I could not. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is where, yeah, I have to get a direct hit on it like that if I want it to be, uh, uh, if I want it to be stopped. So, I managed to do it. Hooray. And there's that. Ah, a little bit shallow. And let's see. It would be interesting in a way to have a mechanic where the damage was increased depending on, you know, how deeply you hit the mobile suit, but I guess the closest we get in GBO2 for that, and a nice uh, a nice tackle on the pixie before the end, and that is the round. Yeah, be nice to have that, but I, basically the equivalent is if you have a multi-hit downswing and you, you know, only hit one uh, swing of it, that's about as close as you get. But yeah, I did 98,000 damage in a standard Zaku, so I am pretty pleased with that. Uh, six and four, and yeah. Oh, was one of the Zakus a Zaku Kai? Okay. That, that of course, can dodge roll. But anyway, that is going to do it for today's Gundam Battle Operation 2. We'll be back soon with more. Until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later! still have a couple of uh, high-grade Zaku kits I need to put together. I've got the uh, uh, Origin-type Zaku, which I believe can be put together a couple of different ways for parts for either the uh, early or late type. Uh, and the uh, Cuckoo's Doned Zaku, which I've kind of been uh, avoiding because that would, you know, it's got some interesting, like, damaged parts, but I'd have to do a lot of probably very fine painting to make that look good. So I'm just kind of Kind of holding on on that.